Erev Tov Rabotai, we're continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Maaser Sheni. We're up to Perik Dal Mishnah Hey. Today's Mishnah Yot should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aran Baiv, and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelu, Menuchatam, Began Eden, Amen. In yesterday's Mishnah, we described a legal loophole by which a person can redeem his, maas- his own Maaser Sheni without having, having to add a fifth. The Mishnah spoke about a person can say to his adult son or daughter or to his Hebrew servant or maidservant, here are these coins, use them to redeem this Maaser Shini for yourself. Since the child or servant is redeeming Maaser Shini that's not his, he does not have to add the fifth. Today's Mishnah is going to tell us another tactic that a person can use to redeem his Maaser Shini without adding a fifth. The Mishnah says, Hayah Omed Bagorin, if the owner of the produce was standing at the threshing floor, then be Adumaot, and he did not have any coins in his hand, which with, with which to perform the tactic that we just described, Omer Lechaveroi may say to his friend who was with him, This produce is hereby given to you as a gift, and the Rav clarifies, he is giving the untithed produce as a gift before he separates the Maaser Sheni. Chozer Omer then says to his friend, this produce is hereby redeemed upon coins that I have in my house. Now, since the produce now belongs to his friend, the original owner can redeem it with his coins without having to add a fifth. And the Mephashim explain, a person may redeem Maaser Shini produce that is in one place upon coins that are located in another place, as we learned in Mishnah chapter 3, Mishnah 4. But here, like in the previous Mishnah, the owner relies on his friend to give back the produce after he redeems it. And nevertheless, this tactic is effective as the Mephoshim explained to us. That is the Rabotai of Mishnah Hey. Mishnah Vav now discusses a person who redeems his Maasil Shini produce by selling it. Basically, the Mephoshim explained the buyer pays for the produce and the Maasil Shini sanctity transfers to that money. So the produce now owned by the buyer becomes chulin. The Mephoshim explained, this is the only way that Maasil Shini produce can be sold. A person may not sell it on condition that the produce simply transferred to the buyer's possession but keep its Maasil Shini sanctity. The only way to do it is that the Maasil Shini sanctity transfers to the money that the buyer is giving you. Now, two things are, ha- are therefore happening here. Number one, a sale, a transfer of ownership from the seller to the buyer. And number two, a redemption, a transfer of Maasil Shini sanctity from produce to the money. Now, the sale takes place when the buyer takes the produce for himself. And the Mephoshim explain, when an object is sold, the buyer does not take ownership of it when he pays for it, but rather when he performs an act of ownership, which is what we call a kinyan. Our Mishnah will assume that the buyer does the kinyan most commonly used for movable objects, which is known as Mishicha, and it consists of the buyer drawing the object towards himself. At that time, the purchase price is set. However, the redemption does not take place until the buyer pays the money. So the Mishnah discusses now where the value of the produce changes between the time the seller took it, made a kinyan, and the time that he pays for it. Mashach mimenu maaser b'selev. The buyer drew maaser shini produce from the seller when it was worth one sela. He made a kinyan. He acquired it, and the sale price was thus set at one sela. Velo ispik livdoto ad shamad b'shtaim, but he did not have a chance to redeem it, meaning pay for it, until the price rose. Now it's worth two slaim. The redemption price is set at two slaim, since that is what it is now worth. Therefore, the buyer gives the seller a sela as payment, and the buyer therefore gains a sela, since he paid one sela for produce that is now worth two slaim. But since the redemption price is two slaim, the sela that the buyer paid serves only as a partial redemption for the maser shini. The buyer has to now complete the redemption by designating another sela as maser shini. The first maser shini sale, meaning the one paid for the produce belongs to the seller. Umaser shini shelo, and the second maaser shini sela, with which the buyer completes the redemption, that belongs to the buyer. And then Farshim explained, since the sale price is only one sela, that's all the seller is entitled to receive. The produce now belongs to the buyer, but it's only half redeemed. Therefore, the buyer must designate another seller to redeem the rest of it. Both slime take on maaser shini sanctity, and the result is that the seller and the buyer each have a sale of Maaser Shini that they must spend in Yerushalayim. If he doesn't want to redeem it, the buyer can simply bring the produce to Yerushalayim and eat it there. The Mishnah now discusses the reverse case where the value of the produce decreases after the sale price is set. 
משך ממנו מעשר בשתיים, if the buyer drew מעשר שני produce from the seller, he made a קניין, when it was worth two סלעים, and the sale price was set at two סלעים, ולא הספיק לבדותו עד שעמד בסלע, but he did not have a chance to redeem it, meaning pay for it, until its price decreased, so it's worth only one סלע, the redemption price is set at one סלע, נותן לו סלע מחולין, Therefore, the buyer gives the seller one sella, which is half of the purchase payment from his chulin money. And since the redemption price is only one sella, the, this money redeems all the produce. And the Vashim explained, since this sella will redeem the ma'asel shini, it must be a sella of chulin. Because ma'asel shini can be redeemed only with money that is chulin, and now with money that already has ma'asel shini sanctity. The sella shel ma'asel shini shelo, and the Mishnah says, he may pay the other sella, the other half of the purchase payment from his own Maaser Shini money, because since the Maaser Shini is already fully redeemed, this second coin is not being used for redemption, therefore he may use a coin that is already Maaser Shini to pay for it. And the Mephoshim explain, at this point the buyer does not have to redeem the other seller's worth of produce, he just has to pay for it. Therefore, he doesn't have to use Khunin money for the purchase, he may give the seller a seller with Maaser Shini sanctity, and the seller, seller will have to use it in Yerushalayim. Now, although we learned in chapter 1, Mishnah 7, and chapter 3, Mishnah 1, that a person may not use Maaser Shini money to pay a debt, this buyer may pay for the second half of the purchase with a Maaser Shini coin. The reason being because when the buyer took possession of the produce when it was worth two slaim, he became responsible for a debt of two slaim of Maaser Shini. Because if the price had not got da- gone down, both slaim that he paid would have become Maaser Shini. Now, since this was the original debt, he may pay the second seller with Maaser Shini money so that the seller ends up with, with two slaim of Maaser Shini, just as he just as he would have received had the price not gone down. Now, the Mishnah continues to discuss, now that we said that the buyer must pay for half of the purchase with Maaser Shini money, not that he must, I'm sorry, that he has the ability to pay with Maaser Shini money, half of it with Khunin he must, the other half if he wants he could do it with Maaser Shini money, the Mishnah gives an exception to this rule, If the seller was an Amaretz, who cannot be trusted to treat Maaser Shini properly, the buyer may not pay him with Maaser Shini money, like we learned in chapter 3, Mishnah 3, it is forbidden to give Maaser Shini to an Amaretz out of concern he might eat it when he is Tamer. Now, even though the first seller will take on Maaser Shini sanctity when the seller takes it, there's no problem with giving it to a seller who is an Amaretz, because that seller simply replaces the Maaser Shini produce that the Amaretz originally had. It's only forbidden to give him Maaser Shini that he did not have previously. Now, therefore, the Mishnah says, The buyer may give him the second seller for money with the sanctity of Maaser Shini of Demai, which may be given to an Amaretz, like we learned in chapter 3, Mishnah 3. And that is the Nabutai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Amen.